All right, here we go, brother. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to One Liners, a new weekly series centered around performance marketing space. My name is Joey Liner of Liner Connections, and I will be your host. The goal of this weekly series is to feature key players and influencers from the performance marketing landscape. Let's go over some ground rules, just so you have a better understanding of the format up front. It's very simple, 10 minutes, unedited, real talk. The clock will start now as I introduce my first guest, the guy who got me in this space, a best friend and mentor. Welcome, Jason Goldsmith. Jason, please introduce yourself. Thanks, Joey. Uh, I'm Jason Goldsmith, uh, father, husband, and serial entrepreneur. I founded three companies, led three companies as a CEO, and had three exits. Uh, I've just started my consulting firm, but most recently I was the co-founder and CEO of Car Checks, which is an insure tech business that I started building almost two decades ago to disrupt the vehicle protection space. Dude, super, like most people can't get through one acquisition as a founder, um, it's super hard. You've been through multiple acquisitions. So like, how you feeling, dude? Like you're just coming off a couple of weeks. Like, how do you feel, man? What do you, and what um, are you doing? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for asking. Um, I, I feel free after almost 20 years in the same space, man, I feel free. You know, it was the easiest exit process that I've ever experienced thus far. You know, selling the business to my majority shareholders, you know, start to finish, it took 24 days. So. The advantage of it there is that, you know, I got to skip the due diligence, you know, reps and warrants, et cetera. You know, I saved a ton of ton, ton on legal, which is always good. And of course, you know, that many zeros doesn't usually change hands quickly. So that was really nice to see. But, you know, every um, acquisition, every exit is different. They all have their challenges. They almost always die um, at least three times. That's kind of the way that I explain it. And you, know, you have to figure out a way to get through to the end. And, you know, I always tell you know, entrepreneurs that any exit is a small miracle, um, maybe sometimes a large miracle, but it's a miracle. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just so hard to get there. Like I said, there's so many moving parts and so many things that can go wrong. Uh, but but congrats, man. I'm so happy for you. Um, Thanks, so as I mentioned, Jason's like my one of my best friends. We go back um, all the way to end of middle school, beginning of high school. Uh, one of my most fondest memories is post uh, college when we were both settled back into our our hometown. Um, we were hanging out regularly, but then Jason had a, a Super Bowl party in 2000 when our beloved Ravens made it to the Super Bowl. And I remember this, you know, very crystal clear because you had hosted all of us over. It was the first Super Bowl broadcast in HD, and you had yeah. set up your broadcast in a room in the back, and. Mm -hmm. and and yeah. I was up front with a bunch of other guys. Like we, you know, you sure. couldn't fit everybody in one room. It wasn't it, it? Just it was too hard. You, thankfully, you hosted. Plus, everybody. I wanted to. I was so excited that I was watching the HD broadcast, but there was the delay. <laughs> the delay. So that was it. The time like delay. Ahead of me. You so, were ahead of me. If ever, any football fan remembers it, the rate, it just went perfect for the Ravens. Every play. No. I mean, literally, it was like everything was going right, and we were. Yeah, that was because. We were about five, six seconds ahead of you guys. So there was one point where you came over and you were like, hey, dude, do you guys like, do you guys mind if like you stop cheering? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> we're like, yeah, sure. We can do that. Yeah, Super right. Bowl. Yeah, but right. it was so awesome, dude. Thank well, by the so end, we were all gathered in the same it, room in a mosh pit together. And we just it said, did not you know, matter. And then we went downtown Baltimore and celebrated with everybody. But. Yeah. That was awesome, yeah. man. And you and that, I. Been... It was so fun. You know, that experience in my house, like you just said, like heading downtown after the win to celebrate at the Alvar, you know, that'll be a memory that I have forever, you know, only to be trumped by our memories of the 2012 Super Bowl when we went to New Orleans. Went yeah. together. Exactly. Yeah. But um, you and I were stayed close after that. And I still, to this day, credit you for helping me get uh, into this space because you had started a company, thelonepage.com. So tell us a little bit. Do you remember that? Like, tell me, tell everybody how you got me, recruited me. So you say, I like to say almost saved me. Like, I love T. Rowe Price, 
and the people that I work with, but you got you you really opened me up to being into uh, internet startup. Yeah, I mean, look at the time. I remember just thinking like you would be so much happier at the loan page than you are at T Row, and that you make a lot more money. And I think my instincts were right about that, right? But um, it wasn't like a a crazy plan at, at the time. I was like, man, I need employees. Like, I love Joey. He's got like the best attitude in the world. Um, and really, that's what you know. You became a barometer for me. I tell people this all the time, you know, as to how we were doing culturally and, you know, financially at the loan page, you know, your positive attitude was completely infectious and it is, always has been, is today. And I knew that if you were ever upset that we were doing something wrong. So it was a great barometer for me. Fortunately for us, I think that didn't happen often with that amazing crew of people that we had. I mean, what a great experience. We were all so lucky to have that, uh, that experience at that time in our career. Yeah, it was... I just did, like I remember single working with other key guys in the space today, Ben Levy, Sean Fenlon, Jeff Say. Uh, we just we just had a remarkable experience at that time. Uh, Scott Landsman, uh, you know, it was just such an awesome experience. And thank you for creating it. So like we, we grew the long page, had an amazing time together. And you decided after we had, you had sold the business, your one of your first exits. Uh, you had started to start up car checks. So tell her what 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 got you excited into cars, like, and why did you want to get into the cars, you know, marketing landscape? Well, I mean, if I'm being honest, it was serendipity. I mean, I was looking for a weekend car when we were in the process of selling the loan page. I bought the assets, if you remember, it was April of 2003, and we sold the loan page to Battery Ventures in December. So I was already kind of happened by accident i was looking for a, a weekend car a, a 96 jaguar which by the way is like the biggest piece <laughs> of shit the v12 that you could ever buy it was a convertible but i always loved that car and so i found one that was in portland oregon and so i went online i typed into google like pre-purchase auto inspection in portland oregon and this little mom and pop company uh car checks came up it was like you know literally the image was like a page of like a broken car and an 800 number so I called it and this guy, his name was Dave Kellogg and he answered the phone. He was the owner and he did the first inspection for me. And, and I found out that the seller had misrepresented the vehicle. So, you know, essentially the car had a repaint and all these other things that the seller had misrepresented. So I did this like four, I didn't buy that car. I did this like four or five other times. And then I was like, man, what a great idea this guy has. I wonder what he's doing with this thing. And he wanted to do some local, we had all these conversations. He wanted to do some like local auction thing that was like a local version of eBay. And I was like, well, why don't you go do that? I'll give you $15,000 for the assets of car checks. And so that's what I did. And, and then we, you know, we raised capital on a really nice valuation shortly thereafter and started the business as a pre-purchase inspection business. I think he had maybe, you know, 12, 15 inspectors was doing, you know, less than 10,000 in revenue when we bought the business. And um, you know, we, we grew that to over 1100 inspectors nationwide. And that was just obviously one part of car checks, but that was the origin story of how the whole thing started. Um, and again, serendipity. Amazing, man. Yeah. And you built out yeah. one of the largest auto warranty outfits, you know, uh, buying, selling, generating your own leads, working through a call program. Um, what would you say was the big, yeah. one of the biggest challenges that you had growing the business over the years as CEO? Well, I mean, there were a lot of challenges. You know, I can't definitively give you like the biggest challenge, but I can tell you like we stepped in so many fucking landmines uh, along the way. You know, we survived the, the Great Recession in 2008. We survived COVID. Um, you know, but one of the most difficult challenges we had to overcome was back in like the 2012, 2013 timeframe when one of our administrators, those are the people who pay claims for us. We sell their plans. Essentially, we acted as a broker. We tried to give the customer the most competitive coverage, or the best, the highest coverage, at the most competitive price. And so um, there, that administrator went out of business. And uh, that shouldn't have had any impact on our customers. But unfortunately, they used, instead of reinsurance, they used what's called a risk retention group. And so the problem was that at RRG didn't have dollar one coverage. In other words, they didn't pay when that reserve ran out of money, they should pay yeah. at dollar one, the customer, there's no one around that. But they yeah. paid at 115%. So there was a 15% gap 
And of course, the company went out of business, couldn't cover the 15%. So now we've got customers that, you know, they're under contract with the admin. We have no financial obligation to take care of those customers. And the other people in our industry who, you know, were using that same admin just screwed over their customers. And so that didn't align with our values and it didn't align with our brand. So we had to figure out a way to pay and adjudicate. So also adjudicate the claims, pay millions of dollars in claims to those customers. So ultimately we had to ask our shareholders to step in for a capital call, which as a shareholder, you probably remember. And, you know, many of them did and it helped yes. us, you know, pay, we paid every single claim and we preserved the value of the car checks brand. But, um, you know, this is just one of many landmines. And again, it's, you know, you've got a, the, the analogy to um, to being a boxer is always a good one for an entrepreneur, right? I mean, it's really not how many times you get hit, it's how many times you get back up. Um, and if you don't have the stomach for that, like you're in the wrong business, just candidly. Amen, dude. Amen. Yeah. Oh, we're coming up to our 10 minutes here. It went by so fast, right. man. It's our first one. So thank you so much. Um, tell us just a little bit here what you're doing now and how everybody can get in touch with you. Thank you so much for sharing your. Oh yeah, no, no problem, brother. I could, I could do this forever. Um, so you know, I thought that I was going to take at least six months off, but that lasted like six minutes. So I'm looking <laughs> forward. You know, right now I'm looking forward to help Westmore. Uh, Westmore is running for governor here in Maryland, assuming he gets elected governor with increasing entrepreneurship in Maryland and 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 Baltimore. It's really important to me uh, what goes on in the city of Baltimore, bringing more business to the state and the city. I'm helping Towson University. I'm serving on the Dean's Advisory Council there for the College of Liberal Arts, and I plan to help them attract entrepreneurs. And um, they've got a beautiful incubator they built in the heart of Towson, and I'm going to help them bring some, some good folks into that. And now, until I get excited about a new venture, you know, I, I'm cons I've, I've started a consulting business and going to help folks who need help with their exit planning, capital raising, you know, corporate culture development, strategic planning, of course. Performance awesome. marketing, my first, my first love. So yeah, man, I'm excited to yeah. do some stuff with you too. So tell yeah, everybody man. how they get, the, how they find your new page. I saw you put up a, a post on LinkedIn. Yeah, so the easiest thing to do is just email me at jason at getgoldie.com. Um, of course, you can find me on LinkedIn, and um, you can you can contact me through all the usual social media. But if you send an email to that address, um, I'll get back to you quickly. And uh, I'd love to connect and see if I can help you solve some of your, uh, hopefully, uh, your problems, no matter how complicated they are. I love digging in to uh, the more complicated for me, the better. Dude, thanks so much again for joining me. I, uh, it's my first of hopefully many that I kick off in the weekly series. And uh, 10 minutes flies by pretty quickly. <laughs> that was awesome. Eh? You know, have good a, luck. Best success, good, man. Yeah. I love you. I Anytime. wish I love you too. I wish I could go more, you know, come back home for more Ravens games, but hopefully you'll be out here for the Super Bowl in Arizona. So we'll do it all the third time. All right, brother. Amen. See you soon, man. Thanks, Take everybody. Care, bro. Yeah.